the questions relating to capital gains came from four people. Jeffrey says, how do I minimize capital gains tax? Rob asked, is there uh, any benefits in selling an investment property before retirement? Planning to retire at 63 and hope to live off the income. Can't access an age pension until I'm 67. The reason why you might consider doing this, Rob, is that you can manage the gain. So if you retire and then have a low income year, that's another way of managing the gain. So not triggering the gain whilst you're employed. And then you can use the Mary scenario to offset the gain. You can also get the money into the tax effective superannuation environment and move it to pension phase and therefore you'll pay accumulate no capital gains tax. Capital gains tax is the hidden, hidden death duties. If you've got an asset outside of super and it's worth $100,000 now and you might have a gain of, you bought $80,000 and you had a gain of 20, you could potentially manage that gain, sell that asset, manage the gain and pay very little tax on it. Whereas if you held on to that and put the money into super and pay no capital gains tax into the future because the pension phase of super that you don't pay any tax in. If you held on to that $100,000 for the next 20 years and it grew to $500,000, then your beneficiaries, if you hold that asset when you die, are going to be subject to that tax on that $400,000 or, or half of that, at least $200,000. So capital gains tax is the hidden, hidden death duty and you can manage that gain by making contributions to superannuation. The other thing is that if your investment property is generating $20,000 of income and you need $30,000 of income, you can't sell off the garage. You've got to sell the whole asset. So it can be an effective way of moving from big lumpy assets when you're in building up your retirement, moving towards more liquid assets as you move into the pension phase and looking at drawing from your assets. Having liquid assets or unitized investments where you can sell down little bits of it over time is, is an effective way in retirement your investments in retirement. Garrick just asked, is it worth selling, uh, setting up an SMSF? How to pay as little tax as possible if when selling an investment property? If the investment property is in your own name, then what we've just talked about applies really well. Is it worth setting up an SMSF? Generally, you've got to have a significant amount of money in your super fund to warrant setting up an SMSF. Uh, often oh, we quote sort of six to eight hundred thousand dollars or more but the key thing is why you're setting up an SMSF generally it's cheaper to not set one up or just use public offer funds unless you're going to b invest in direct property so uh, residential property or you're going to borrow money to invest in property a lot of the other investment structures uh, you know direct shares managed investments uh, a range of investments can be accessed through a lot cheaper platforms than self-managed super funds. If you're going to, to administer it yourself, which not many people uh, seem to do, then you can have some savings by having a self-managed super fund, but because you often need to manage all the you know, the trust deed and all the other obligations of having a self-managed super fund, for the majority of people, it's generally not the, 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 the way to go unless they do want to invest in, in property through it. Julianne asked, I will want to sell some shares soon how do i limit the capital gains on the sale of the shares i've been buying the in the shares in dividend reinvestment plans over many years i'm 61 years of old age and working three days a week so what we just talked through in relation to the uh, that sale of the investment property as same also applies for shares the tricky bit with you is that um you need to go back and this is a nightmare for us when we're when we're plans together is to try and work out the, the capital or the, the cost base because you're, you're buying shares each year in little tiny amounts and so depending on how good your record keeping is it might be a very difficult calculation to work out what the capital gain is yeah but definitely the same thing applies you can make contributions to super to reduce the gains